Welcome to Norton Chemistry. Today we're going to be doing a group 7, the halogens, revision video. We'll do some exam questions at the end to help you apply your knowledge to exam scenarios. In the halogens, electronegativity decreases down the group because shielding an atomic radius increases down the group as new energy levels are added. And boiling point increases down the group because the molecules have more electrons meaning stronger London forces which require more energy to overcome. So you can see that we've got a table laying out the halogens, the number of electrons, the boiling point and the state and appearance at room temperature and pressure of each of the halogens. So fluorine has nine electrons in each molecule and has a boiling point of minus 188 degrees Celsius. And then you can see that iodine has 53 electrons and has a boiling point of positive 184 degrees celsius so you can see that as the electrons increase there's a trend of increasing boiling point and then at room temperature and pressure fluorine is a pale yellow gas fluorine is a pale green gas bromine is a red brown liquid because it has a high boiling point and iodine is a shiny gray black solid because it has a very high boiling point the halogens have seven electrons in that outer shell so you need to gain one electron to achieve the octet rule which is eight electrons so they form one minus ions. So for example, chlorine gains two electrons to form two Cl minus ions, so one minus ions. So each atom gains one electron. And then there's a trend in reactivity. So reactivity actually decreases down the group because shielding an atomic radius increases, which decreases the nuclear attraction to the outer shell electrons. So more energy is required to gain an electron and be reduced. So they actually become weaker oxidizing agents down the group. Remember your definition of an oxidizing agent. So it's the element that is reduced, so it gains electrons from the element that is oxidized. We have an equation to represent this. So chlorine reacts with bromide ions to form chloride ions and bromine. So chlorine displaces the bromide ions. So it starts off as pale green as chlorine is dissolved in aqueous solution. And then it goes to orange as bromine is dissolved in aqueous solution. So you can see that chlorine in aqueous solution is pale green. Bromine is orange, as we know from the bromine test for alkenes. And iodine is brown. And then in cyclohexane, it's also important to remember that iodine appears violet in cyclohexane, which can help to differentiate better between bromine and iodine, because chlorine and bromine both appear the same as they do in water in cyclohexane. We have some precipitation reactions. So Ag+, plus or silver ions, are used to test for halides. Silver halides form when silver nitrate is added to aqueous halide ions. So we've got an ionic equation to represent this. So Ag plus aqueous reacts with X minus, which just represents any halide ion, forming AgX, which is a solid precipitate. And then we can use this to differentiate between the halide ions. So for Cl minus, we form a white precipitate. For bromide, we form a cream precipitate. And for iodide, we form a yellow precipitate. And to help us really differentiate between these precipitates, because they can be difficult to tell apart, especially silver chloride and silver bromide. So we use different concentrations of ammonia. Silver chloride is soluble in dilute ammonia. Silver bromide is soluble in concentrated ammonia. Silver iodide is actually insoluble in concentrated ammonia. So we have some uses of chlorine. So chlorine dissolves in water to form hydrochloric acid and chloric one acid. So that one represents the oxidation number of the chlorine atom in the chloric acid. Chloric 1 acid is actually HClO and this reaction occurs by disproportionation. So make sure to check out my redox and oxidation numbers video in the top right hand corner for more help on disproportionation. So you can see in this equation chlorine goes from 0 to minus 1 and plus 1 in HClO. So disproportionation is when chlorine is both oxidized and reduced. So it's reduced to minus 1 in HCl and it's oxidized to plus 1 in HClO. An advantage of this use of chlorine is that HClO is an oxidizing agent, so it ensures that water is drinkable by killing the bacteria, but it has some disadvantages as well. Chlorine is actually toxic, and chlorine can react to form chlorinated hydrocarbons, which are known carcinogens, so they can actually cause cancer. Then with bleach manufacturing, so chlorine reacts with cold dilute sodium hydroxide in a disproportionation reaction to form bleach, which is sodium chlorate 1. So again, that chlorine atom has an oxidation number of plus 1. And you can see that we have an equation. So chlorine reacts with two molecules of NaOH to form sodium chloride and sodium chloride 1, as well as water. And chlorine goes from 0 in Cl2 to minus 1 in NaCl and plus 1 in NaClO. So it's disproportionation. This question is about the halogen group of elements and some of their compounds. The halogens show trends in their properties down the group. The boiling points of three halogens are shown below. Explain why the halogens show this trend in boiling points. So this isn't easy three marks if you know how to answer it. 
So down the group, the number of electrons in the halogens increases. So because the number of electrons increases, the strength of the London forces down the group increases. And therefore the London forces require more energy to overcome down the group. Iodine can be used for small-scale purification of drinking water. Iodine reacts with water as shown below. So iodine reacts with water to form hydrogen iodide and HIO. Using oxidation numbers, explain why this reaction is a disproportionation. If we write out the equation down here, you can see that iodine starts at zero and goes to minus one in HI and plus one in HIO because oxygen is going to be minus two and hydrogen is going to be plus one. So to balance that out, we need plus one on the ID to give us zero. So in our answer, we can say that ID goes from zero in I2 to minus one in HI, which is reduction. And it also goes from zero in I2 to plus one in HI, which is oxidation. So the same element is both oxidized and reduced at the same time. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my Group 2 Metals revision video, which is in the bottom right hand corner now. Also, you can check out my website to purchase my notes and flashcards or book a tutoring session.